All right, this lesson is going to be on resonance, diffraction, refraction, and reflection. Uh, so there's going to be a, this unit's probably going to be over in two more lessons, not including this one. So there's two more lessons after this one. And the test is going to be in the same exact style as the previous test, right? It's going to be more conceptually focused. So I expect you to understand how to explain each question. If you got questions on the Google form wrong, I released the scores and I in the scores there's feedback on why the correct answer is the correct answer and why the wrong answer is the wrong answer. So if you've been diligently answering these questions, I'm assuming that if you got everything right, that you know how to explain each thing conceptually. Right? That's an assumption I'm gonna make. Also Something else I noticed is that the number of views don't really match the number of Google Form submissions. Uh, the Google Form submissions is double the amount of views on the on the YouTube video that we're supposed to watch. And now let's assume that half. Let's assume that you don't really watch the YouTube video, which is fine. Maybe you're looking at the PowerPoint. Let's assume that fifty percent of people that don't watch the YouTube video read the PowerPoint instead, uh, it, it's still a decent amount of people that are not really doing anything. But I can't make a conclusive uh, judgment on that. I'll make a conclusive judgment when I see the test grades, which is really the, the final judgment, judgment call. All right, moving on, resonance. Uh, so all of you are made up of atoms. We're all made up of atoms. And all our atoms are vibrating. If we have a non-zero, if unless we're at absolute zero, which is zero kelvins, unless we're at absolute zero, all our atoms are vibrating. And this vibration, you can kind of think of it like a, a wave, actually, because you're going up and down, up and down. You can actually picture this as a wave you're all vibrating at a certain frequency. You're going up, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're all vibrating at a certain frequency. doesn't matter if you're a solid like ice or something or like a metal, metal or your phone. Everything is vibrating. You might not see it, but it's happening at a very microscopic level. All, right? all atoms are vibrating. And we're going to call the rate at which they vibrate their natural frequency. So all objects have a natural frequency that they vibrate at. And now we're going to get to the idea of resonance. And this GIF right here is going to show you resonance. Uh, so why is this happening? The elbow at the beginning was staying still. Let's watch it again. Uh, uh, they speak in Chinese, by the way, but that's not relevant. So what's happening here? How does this show resonance? Well, what is happening here in the first place? Well, this person right here is banging this tuning fork. That's what these are called, tuning forks. And after he bangs the tuning fork, it, it makes a sound. It makes sound waves. And now, and those sound waves make the fork right here, the tuning fork right here, vibrate as well. And once this tuning fork right here vibrates, well, the yellow ball is gonna uh, swing back and forth. So that's the idea of resonance. But what exactly is that? I still haven't gone into detail what resonance truly is. And before we go into that, we need to understand the idea of constructive interference. So when you have two identical waves in phase, if we have two waves in phase, well then when you combine these waves, they're gonna have, they're gonna constructively interfere, right? They combine, the energies combine and reach a higher amplitude, right? And just like what's happening on the right hand GIF over here, the boys, the four boys are making the trampoline vibrate at the same frequency as the boy j going up and down, right? And each time they do that, they make him go higher and higher and higher. And you can kind of think of it uh, as resonance. 
So let's look at, look at the left gear from over here. So when you when you have a sound, let's actually pause this video over here. So on the left hand gear, when you have a sound, a continually sound near the natural frequency of this glass, right? If you make a sound constantly near the natural frequency of this glass, you're constructively interfering. The atoms in the glass are already already vibrating at a certain frequency. But if you make a sound, if you add a sound that has the, almost the same natural frequency of the glass, well then you're constructively interfering. You're going to make the glass vibrate more and more and more and more until it breaks, until it shatters. And this is also happening, uh, what's huh? happening right here on the right hand side. And a tuning fork has a natural frequency. Uh, huh? You bang against the tuning fork, the tuning fork makes a sound wave uh, with a frequency, huh? with a similar frequency to itself. That sound wave, uh, huh? since it has a similar frequency to itself, makes the other tuning fork vibrate. Uh, huh? And so that constructively interferes with the uh, second tuning fork. Uh, huh? So that's the idea of resonance. That's the idea of resonance. One over the USA's Tacoma Narrows. And this is happening in real life as well. Uh, due to bad engineering, I guess. So let's take a look at it. From the day it was finished in 1940, it bounced around. Dubbed Galloping Gertie, it became a tourist attraction. Uh, it's called Tacoma Narrows Real Bridge. trouble started the day it began to twist. The wind wasn't particularly strong, but it stayed steady. Each time it twisted, it turned a little more. Finally, it twisted itself apart and became every bridge builder's nightmare. For Gimsing, the answer could be seen in the wind tunnel. The problem with the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was its sharp, square road deck. As the wind hit it, miniature whirlwinds formed at the corners, which started the twisting. The twist turned the deck towards the wind, which produced more twist, and finally, disaster. See, that's it. What's being shown there is constructive interference. You keep twisting at the same exact time, well, you're going to keep making it vibrate more and more and more. And so that's the idea of resonance uh, applied to, applied to uh, in the real world. Right? The, the, the Comer Bridge collapsed because of this phenomenon. And it was just due to bad engineering. You, there, are ways to prevent, um, there are ways to prevent that type of thing happening in the real world. But the engineers, well, they... They put the idea forward, but the city decided that it cost too money, too much money, uh, so they didn't do it. So that's that's why. It's called Tacoma Narrows Bridge. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but whatever. It has something to do with that. The engineers, the engineers definitely wanted to fix that, but it was ignored. All right, so this is moving on, and we're talking about two type of waves. One type of wave is the mechanical wave, right? They require something to travel through. Sound waves need a medium to travel through. They can't travel through space. They need something to vibrate. They need atoms to travel through. Whereas electromagnetic waves, like light, light is an electromagnetic wave, they don't require any medium to travel through. They can travel through walls, objects, and space. All right? Well, not light. I'm talking about yeah, I'm talking about X-rays, stuff like that, stuff like that. Now, and X-rays, ultraviolet light, radio waves are all electromagnetic waves. All right, uh, so they can travel without meat. All right, let's talk about diffraction. So the idea of diffraction is uh, being shown in this picture right here. So most people would think that, well, if you have a tiny opening, all the light waves, again, light is a wave, 
all the light waves would just go straight uh, across, straight across, right? There wouldn't be a spreading like what you see over here. So this really is the idea of the fraction. Well, what is the fraction, right? You see what it is, but you don't really know what how to explain it. And this this kind of shows the fraction maybe a bit better. So if you pass a wave through a small opening, well, what do you see? Right, it's kind of spreading and curving outwards along the edge and uh, all the way outwards. And this is the idea of the fraction. Maybe it's a, it gives you a clearer idea of what the fraction is, maybe. Well, let's go more in depth. If you ever wonder how you can hear someone around the corner, right? you're not directly facing the person, but you still hear their sound. Well, how does this work? Well, it works because of the fraction. Because if you think of the, if you think of this wall as a as a corner, <clears throat> as a corner, and as the waves pass through that corner, well, they start curving, right? These waves start curving, and they start start spreading outwards. And because of this diffraction, because of this phenomenon of diffraction, we can hear the voice of a person around the corner, or music playing in another room. Let's move on. And there are different ways, methods of how the, the diffraction works. If you have a narrow opening, if you have a, I mean not narrow open, if you have a slit with, which has a lot of distance between, if you have a, if the distance between the slits, distance between the openings is not that uh, small, and if it's very large, if it's a large length, then you're not going to really see a diffraction uh, occurring. If you narrow your slit, right, if your slit has a na more narrow opening, then you're going to see some diffraction. You're not going to see much, you're going to be, but you're going to see some. And as your slit gets narrower and narrower, you're going to have a more perfect diffraction. Okay? And there's also one of the reasons why the flashlight uh, opening on your phone is very, is very narrow. If you ever turn on the flashlight on your phone, you'll see that it, well, if you turn off your lights, you're going to see that the flashlight covers a very large distance. It might not cover far, but it does co cover a very large distance. It does cover a very a large distance. All right, and so you, what two properties you have to notice, your wavelength does not change. As you go through the opening, your wavelength does not change. Resulting diffraction wavelengths will be the same as the incoming wavelengths. And the largest wavelengths will produce the greatest diffractions, okay? So these are two concepts you, have, you actually have to understand. Actually, three. Yeah. The thing with the, the uh, slit openings, the resulting diffraction wavelengths, and largest wavelengths. These are three things you have to realize or rather remember. And now that gets to this GIF. Uh, this is Wi-Fi. So the thing at the middle right there, that that's the router, whatever it gives you Wi-Fi, right? So the Wi-Fi is spreading outwards. It's curving around the corners. It's curving around the corners, right? And so that's the fraction. That's showing you the idea of the fraction. Uh, and there are two things that are not exhibited here. One is reflection. Reflection is when it, the waves bounce back towards you. And the idea, the other idea is refraction. Refraction is when they go through these walls, right? Because you, you can see that the waves are going through these walls. How can they go through walls? Because radio waves can go through walls. 5G can't really go through walls that well. 
if you have a Wi-Fi strength app, you'll realize that 5G signals uh, through walls are weaker than 2.4G oh, uh, signals. That's because higher frequencies have a harder time traveling through uh, objects. Now, I'll talk more about refraction next lesson. But right here, this lesson, I just want to talk about uh, reflection. Now, if you take a look at the left image, you have a surface, right? You have a solid surface. Maybe it's a mirror, right? Maybe it's a glass mirror. Well, let's actually say it is a glass mirror. And you shine a, a flashlight towards this mirror. What's going to happen is that the light wave is going to bounce off that mirror and it's going to reach your eye. And that's how you can see things. And there are two things, you, there are three things you need to understand. There are three vocabulary words. The, the first one is called the normal line. The normal line is always perpendicular to the surface. So if this is the surface, well, the normal line should be in the middle going, uh, per is perpendicular, right? So this is the normal line. The dashed line is your normal line. And at the, the angle that the light wave comes in is called the incident wave. That's called your angle of incidence. So the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident wave and the normal line. So that's your angle of incidence right here. You can also see it on the right hand side. Your angle of incidence is between the normal line and the incident line. And your angle of reflection, the angle of reflection is the reflected wave and the angle is, is in between the reflected wave and the normal line, right? Which is you can also see on the right hand side. And there's a law of reflection. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Angle of incidence always equal to the angle of reflection. All right? And that's it. That's it for this lesson.